The Utcubamba River of northeast Peru runs north along the Andes until it feeds into the headwaters of the Amazon. From my lodging in Chachapoyas, I took a taxi south along Highway 8B, which followed the river with often scenic vistas such as here. The Peruvian department of Amazonas is largely jungle brow, lush highlands hinting at the dense rainforests of the Amazon itself. I prepared this screenshot from Google Maps to locate Leme Bamba in northern Peru. Appearances can be deceiving. While this region seems fairly near the Pacific, the overnight drive from the coast to Chachapoyas took over 10 hours to climb the winding, sloping, developing highways. A zoom into the town of Leme Bamba, highlighted in red, emphasizes the fusion of mountain, river, and rainforest terrains gray ranges to the west, green lands to the east. I visited the town to explore the Leme Bamba Community Museum, an anthropological treasury of local native artifacts from ancient to modern times. While most of the archaeological works come from the Chachapoya civilization, the museum also has important collections reflecting the incursion of the Inca Empire and modern pieces from tribal societies in the rainforest. The ancient artifacts are mostly from the last centuries before European contact, and the rainforest pieces are contemporary. If you are familiar with the Game of Thrones series, you know that Winterfell is the northernmost of the Seven Kingdoms, and in many respects I liken Chachapoyas to a, a similar position, in the sense that Chachapoyas is at this meeting point between the northern, wildling, uh, tribal cultures of the rainforest and the massive, politically stratified, and complex civilizations of the Andean South. So it, here it is an interesting um, juncture where the great civilizations, the massive empires of the South are meeting the tribal and uh, more egalitarian um, societies of the North and the East. And so at Chachapoyas, we have this meeting point where the different cultures are sharing ideas, technologies, materials across this part of Western South America. Likewise, in the world of Game of Thrones, the Kingdom of Winterfell was regarded by the Southern Kingdoms as the one that had the most influence from the Northern wildling or free folk cultures. And at the same time, the people of the North saw Winterfell as one of, still one of the Southern Kingdoms. So it was seen as a Southern civilization by the tribal cultures of the North and also very heavily influenced by the tribal cultures according to the Southern Kingdoms. And so it was this kind of threshold between the so-called civilized and uncivilized cultures between the South and the North. And Chachapoyas could be compared in, uh, in a similar way. It was merging the cultures of the Southern civilizations and empires, as well as the egalitarian tribal societies of the North and East rainforests. One last comparison between the world of Game of Thrones and the history of the Northern Andes is that there was no wall to separate the tribal societies of the North and East from the Andean kingdoms to the South. There was a much more ready influx of societies and cultures that the Leme Bamba Museum presents. The museum is showcasing the diversity of cultures and their respective presence in this region of North Peru. The Leme Bamba Community Museum has four main display halls. The first introduces the archaeology of the region and the Chachapoyas culture. At left is a bag made with feline hide and paws, most likely a pumas. At right is the fragment of a woven textile with dyed fibers and geometric patterns delicately preserved due to the elevation, over two kilometers above sea level. These two works are by Chachapoyas artists. These two gourds are also chachapoyas. On the piece at right is a jaguar clutching a serpent, which has become the museum's emblem. This symbol recalls the three cosmic animals of Inca myth, the condor of above, the feline of the earth's surface, and the serpent of below. Such combinations of Amazonian and Andean imagery exemplify the cultural exchanges taking place in the region. Supernatural scenes populate many chachapoyas works.
This drawing shows curious combinations of human and animal elements that could be telling a mythical episode. It comes from the middle band of a meticulously carved gourd that I shot from different angles. The second hall explores the Inca entry, which began in the 15th century. As the Inca were beginning to aggressively expand to the north, they were bringing many aspects of their culture, including matters of organization, technology, ritual, and more. A few fascinating examples from the second hall include this utility cord, which has a sewing needle, carved bone points, and a couple seeds. It reminds me of a utility belt, even if it wasn't worn like one. Inca ritual artifacts include this pakcha, or spout, with crossing channels. To the back is a bowl of coca leaves, which were chewed to induce narcotic effects to improve work stamina or enter shamanic trance. The museum even has three kipu on display. The kipu is a complex Inca technology that deserves its own video. Much of what we know of the archaeology of this cultural region comes from funerary and burial customs. The museum has a replica of a chulpa, which in the Quechua language means mummy or sarcophagus. Into remote, inaccessible cliff caves, the Chachapoyas peoples built extraordinary crypts to contain the mummies of prominent ancestors or leaders. This is the focus of the third hall. It also has mummified animal remains, such as this monkey skull, that was also likely a ritual device. Indeed, here was one of the most amazing parts of the whole museum, the full collection of 219 mummy bundles discovered in a cave near Condor Lake. There has never been such a documented discovery, and I was in awe to see this display in person. This leads now to today's mask. Today's mask decorates the small mummy bundle at left, which contained the adult skeletal remains now beside it. For centuries across the Andes, civilizations from the Moche to the Inca believed that these mummies existed in a state between the realms of the living and the dead. They were thus used in rituals to intercede with and receive from the gods on high. And lastly, the fourth hall is dedicated to the modern indigenous peoples local to the region. These works come from the rainforest communities along the Senepa, Santiago, and Marañón rivers north of Leimebamba. The feathered combs at bottom right, for example, are from the Awaruna tribe of the Marañón River. I loved these ceramic designs so much, I bought one for myself. This is what I mean. The Lema Bamba Museum gift shop offers a selection of handmade works representing the indigenous cultures of this area of North Peru. And there at the gift shop, I purchased this ceramic bowl, which comes from the rainforest uh, cultures of the Western Amazon that are uh, represented in this area. And here you can see some of the traditional designs as well as some details of the make. This was one of my favorite purchases of my entire fortnight in Peru, and I wanted to share some of the designs with I end this video with an assemblage from the town of Huancas, famous for the diversity and quality of their ceramic works. With ancestry from central Peru, the Huancas community arrived into this region as part of Inca efforts to subjugate the Chachapoya and gain access to the Amazon. Despite their centuries of engagement with Inca, Chachapoya, Spanish, and global currents, the Huancas assert their distinct identity through such artistic expressions, especially by women crafters. This meeting point between the mountains and the rainforest continues to provide active ground for native cultural exchange. Thank you for watching and good roads.